Hi right, guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium Nick. Welcome back. Let's do another video. Uh, just as a reminder, patreoncom slash macro You guys can come down and you can join, and uh, we can uh, mentor you on real macroeconomics and investing. So um, another announcement, real quick. We have uh, moved. We have a, a new page now. Uh, Rio Macro uh, Economics and Investing, Rio Macro 123 for the waves, 123. Uh, that's the charting aspect of Rio Macro Economics and Investing. And uh, just started this up about a week uh, or so ago. So come down, like, subscribe, and uh, you'll get the feeds. All right. Also, if you're not following me on Twitter, you can join me. Uh, post uh, a lot of economic data and also some charts occasionally. Uh, these are just some ex examples. Uh, also, don't forget TradingView uh, that I've posted in the past where this was the uh, the VIX, okay? Nice little spike up, you can see, nice and green. Um, the other one uh, was the 10-year uh, bond, okay? Nice little call there. This continue to move lower. Uh, same here with China, right? Right up against resistance, came back down. And um, here's another one where we were talking about uh, NDX, came down, nice correction. Now we're looking for the next wave down. So you get a lot of a lot of good info um, on this uh, on this feed, and also trading view. So for anybody who's interested, you can come down and you can check it out for yourself. Uh, all my calls are live, and um, you can uh, you can observe them. So here's a nice little call here in NDX that it was gonna push higher. And you can just push this little button here and see how it uh, it played out. And sure enough, it went higher and then even higher. Oops, what happened there? And push it again. You have to keep pushing it because it gives it to you in increments. Higher and of course, higher and so on. Okay, so you guys get the point. Uh, so, yeah, you can see all the calls there. Uh, everything is uh, transparent. Of course, I'm not going to give everything away uh, because I, uh, I keep a lot of the stuff uh, for the uh, for the subscribers. So, uh, but definitely you can see a nice little, you know, uh, a nice way the way I do things, which is completely different. I don't use this RSI, MACDs, and moving averages and all this nonsense and you'll also get um, some uh, macroeconomic stuff as well here uh, this is one example of showing you how qe has really affected uh, asset prices uh, and this is a nice little uh, diagram that you, you can kind of wrap your head around as to what's really going on in asset prices this is another uh, nice example where you'll see that the light blue is uh, the stock market okay it's the s p uh, uh, 500 and then uh, on the, the the darker blue here is the cor corporate earnings okay and you can see how they have detached and they look more like 2000 uh, 1999 2000 uh, dot com bubble uh, same same is going on right now in the markets right they're very expensive uh, relative uh, to historic uh, levels and eventually these these do correct right uh, it doesn't mean that Corporate earnings are not going to rise again. Of course, they will at some point, but the stock market will more likely than not start to correct prior uh, to the uh, earnings starting to rise. Another example is, you know, reversing um, uh, debt to GDP uh, from uh, d uh, putting GDP first and then debt. And then what you, you end up seeing is that more and more uh, debt is not resulting in a growth in GDP okay so clearly you've seen that more debt less GDP so obviously that's not very efficient and we're not headed in the right direction in terms of uh, how uh, debt is being used when you have a, a debt to GDP of 4.5 like we do now and you have a GDP growth of about 2% well you know <laughs> That kind of mathematics doesn't work out very nice, right? It's not it's not a path to the to prosperity. That's for sure So before we continue I want I want you to read this real quick for me, okay? 
The words are partisan, but numbers are not. Okay. This is very important because people don't quantify words. They don't, you know, if it sounds good, then it is good. <laughs> but uh, let me give you an example. Take a look at a, at a world map and you're saying, well, you know, what does this have to do with anything? Well, Russia is a country. It's a very big country, right? United States, Canada, Brazil. Where is Singapore on here? Right? I, I bet most people don't even know where Singapore is. But they'll be the first ones on Twitter and social media to tell you about Singapore and how great they are and how wonderful everything is. Right? Here's Singapore. This is the country they're talking about, this little dot. Right? So if I use the word Singapore, and you'll think of it as a country, then you know it implies that it's some, somehow relevant to what the U.S. does or Brazil or Australia or whatever. Okay, so this is what I mean. You have to quantify words. What, what, what does that mean? So back in the day, they used to say, oh, you know, it's a free market. Singapore is a free market. Now they're saying, oh, you know, Singapore is a socialist country. You know, look how well they're doing. What are you talking about? You can spit from one side of Singapore and it will reach the other side of Singapore. So for me, when I hear people talking, first, I, I listen to what they don't say. Okay, then I reverse what they say, and then I try to understand what their intent of what they're saying is. Once I understand all that, then I quantify what they're saying. And when it just doesn't pass the, the smell test, well, I tell them. And, oh, you're rude. Oh, I'm offended. Oh, I'm not. But don't post on social media then. You know, sit there, write to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and be happy because nobody's going to respond to you, and you can believe whatever the hell it is you want to believe, and that's it. But uh, that's not the way social media works. Social media is designed to impose confirmation bias. It wants to enhance it. It wants to enrich it. So whatever we don't like uh, hearing, we just block it away. We stick with our group. And if you want to be popular, if you want to progress. In, in social media, you have to pick a group, and then whatever they say, whether you agree with it or not, you got to run with it. And you have to tell them, yes, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, free stuff for all, yeah, or whatever. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps, yeah, yeah. So we end up with what? A group of people, or groups of people, a bunch of groups of people, reinforcing their confirmation bias, their circular logical fallacies, circle jerking themselves in different uh, areas of social media. And we are heading down uh, the path of the dark ages again, because math, facts, and data do not matter anymore. Yeah, yeah but Singapore is a country. Yeah, it's a country, but <laughs> it, it, it's not a country. <laughs> it's a city state. So here's another example. This is Colin Roach posting this uh, extreme poverty chart. And, oh, look how much better it's gotten since the 1800s. Ha, ha, ha. Everything is wonderful and fine. It used to be 85% people that lived uh, under $2, and now people that live above $2, they're doing so much better. And, uh, you know, hey, still a lot of work to be done, but huh, things are going in the right direction. So we had a nice little back and forth. And, uh, you know, well, this is empirical evidence. Okay, it's empirical evidence. I agree. But what does that mean? Does that mean that people that now live off of $2.05 are much better off than living off of $1.95? Yeah, technically that's correct. But what, what does this even mean? It just means that a bunch of Westerners that don't have a fucking clue as to what's going on in the world, they went, uh, found this chart, they posted it, and hey, isn't things better? Yeah. Makes me feel better this holiday season. You know, we're, we're heading in the right direction. And then it's always that double talk. Well, I didn't say things are good. You know, I'm just saying things are getting better. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> to me, it's ridiculous, okay? That's just a, a ridiculous uh, chart to post, and it really doesn't mean anything. I, I don't care if you're living now with $2.05 versus $1.95. Things are not better, period. So again, while technically he's correct, yes, things are improving, it's empirical evidence, yes, 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 yes. The intent, okay, the, the reality of the situation is it's not better. Um, and 
and that's just the way it is until until you know people start to um, have a better education be uh, be employed have a good job uh, and, and start participating with the rest of us uh, things are not going to be better you can post a thousand of these charts it's not going to make a difference and as an airline captain and I said this before I've seen the entire planet and I've seen what it's like and it's a it's a disaster area then of course the argument is going to be like well you know um, you're like a flat earther you walk outside your door you see the earth is flat and you're saying the the earth is flat and it's based on your experience and no 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 don't try see this is what I'm saying people start using these words right but they don't quantify these words they don't understand even if you go to European countries you go to Spain you go to France you go to Greece you go to these they make a much higher standard of living more money whatever are they happy right no are things improving no <laughs> so again when you see charts like this that when I see charts like this okay and uh, it just it's detached from reality and it's designed for somebody who's sitting in Starbucks sipping their mocha cappuccino and saying oh look things are getting much better <laughs> we're making progress since 1800 this is empirical evidence well you know that person is detached from reality for me okay and that's the way I approach everything economics charting investing doesn't matter to me this is the way I look at things. I let the math, facts, and data tell me what is going on. Okay. Here's another little clown show over here. Uh, oh, the PMI data is crushing the bear's hearts today. It's like, <laughs> what? What are you talking about? But, you know, again, it's these people who uh, they're going to tell you words that are basically meaningless. PMI data sucks. Period. <laughs> There's nothing to crush any bear's heart. It's not good. Okay. There's a lot of data, uh, economic data across the mosaic of data. Okay. That is not performing as it should. All right. And when that happens, usually things get worse and worse. Not always, but they usually get worse and worse. But you have people like uh, Logan, right, the clown show, who have back tested. A model of six point model going back to 1960 which has absolutely nothing to do with the economy today uh, post QE world that we live in and uh, there's no more there's there's no more analyzing to do but you back tested it well that's it when you back tested a, a economic model that when we were on a gold standard it worked does that make sense in fact, in this particular case, the leading indicator, one of his uh, models, the leading indicator in 2007 was not showing a recession. Okay. It has since been revised in 2011 uh, to include credit. And now all the charts that you see from the LEI have been redrawn. So we can point to that LEI, the new one, and say, oh, look how perfect it looked. Yeah, well, if you were actually a trader back in 2007, investor, whatever, and you looked at the LEI, didn't tell you anything. So again, you have to quantify people's words. You have to look at what they're saying, quantify it. If it was that easy and we just had six point model that we can back test and anybody that has tried to back test uh, stocks, bonds, whatever, and surely they came up with one little system that worked that over the course of time made money and then they click the automatic button go and guess what <laughs> they blow out their account they lose all their money and uh, that's how good back testing is also this clown show also was uh, talking about how the real economy is beating the bears <sighs> wow what real economy what, what is he talking about Did, <laughs> And he's supposed to be Mr. Math, Facts, and Data. Well, that's not the way it is. The reality is that we have a trillion dollar deficits, okay, 4.5% of GDP. We had 4 trillion in quantitative easing over the past 10 years. 5 trillion, 
$5 trillion in stock buybacks, right? So they buy back the stocks and they give uh, those dollars back to the, uh, to, to the owners of those stocks, okay? <coughs> QE, that's not supposed to be inflationary, right? Because it's just an asset swap. Yes, this is true, but it does increase the amount of money because it liquefies bonds. The central bank buys back those bonds, gives cash back to the people, right? Reserves, and then they can go out and do what? Buy whatever they want with it. And since it's savers that receive those dollars back, they're gonna go out and they're gonna invest in various asset classes. So that's when you're gonna see that money flow into stocks, right? Into bonds and so forth. Then you have lower uh, taxes, right? With lower taxes more money uh, to savers, right? We have higher wages now. Productivity first led. Everybody was complaining about, oh, you know, there's, there's no rising wages. Yes, because productivity first uh, comes first and then comes the, the wage rise. So we have rising wages. Uh, we have the most amount of people that have uh, worked ever before in history. Um, more jobs than people looking for jobs, and that has to do with demographics, right? As, as the baby boomers start going into retirement, you're gonna end up with more jobs uh, than people looking for jobs. There's a little trough in there if you look at the demographics. So that's why that came to be, and that also helped push up wages. Uh, we have more, um, we have zero interest rate policy, essentially, right? <laughs> Negative rates, we were as high as 17 trillion. Uh, now I think it's around $12 trillion worldwide uh, that are negative interest rates. Record stock market, 11 year economic expansion. And guess what? The banks don't have enough money. How the hell do the banks not have enough money? Right? They can't even meet $1.5 trillion reserve requirement. So uh, you had four trillion in QE, five trillion stock buybacks, um, lower taxes, and now we have gotten to the point where one bank cannot borrow from another bank because the other bank doesn't have money or they don't trust them or whatever the case is, but they won't tell us the name. And we've pumped uh, uh, a third of a trillion dollars in the past few months. Uh, back into QE, which is, we're not supposed to call it QE. And Logan, the clown show says, the real economy is beating the bears. Again, you gotta listen to what people say. Listen listen to what they're saying. If you ask him, he'll tell you, oh, I don't know anything about stocks. No, no, I'm not talking about stocks. I'm talking about the economy. But yet he calls them bears. Who are the bears? Bears only exist in stock markets, right? So that is a, uh, a reference to stocks. It's not a reference to economics. I don't go around saying to people, oh, you're an economic bear. <laughs> I, I, never, I, don't, I never heard anybody say that. I heard stock market bear or bull, but not economic. Now on the flip side of that coin, okay, let's take a look at what MMT says. Well, in this article up top here, uh, they call Kelton, Natasha Kelton, I call her Natasha because she's a Soviet uh, sympathizer. She says, oh, the economy is junk economy. All right. Then a few months later, when the economy was doing great, and this is when interest rates were rising and so forth, this is what Stephanie said. Oh, deficits up, growth up, inflation uh, subdued, rates go up. Uh, where Fed says revision uh, are, are working, uh, revisionists are working overtime, will say anything except MMT was right. Wait a minute. First, you say the economy is a junk, and then you want to take credit for the economy for what it is. These are the rock stars. These are the rock stars. Okay, they're telling you these things. Another clown show. Another clown show. So what, what, ha, what has MMT done? Well, they've attached themselves to a political ideology and they just say the opposite of everything, um, of whatever they said the day before, depending on who they're talking to. 
promised everybody that they will have free this and free that and free this and you have rights to this and right to that and everybody's right okay from the government and uh, they gain popularity so my question is okay your economic theory works your MMT works great why don't you go to these third world countries Bangladesh Haiti whatever go implement your MMT and all the rights these people have and give them all the free stuff by printing money because their uh, red ink is our black ink go and do it show us how good that economic model works and then i assure you that the us europe and the rest of the world are going to listen to you and we're going to follow and we're going to say yes mmt was right why don't they do that why doesn't mmt get together with colin and go out there or colin whatever his name is and go out there and start start doing good for the world start high-fiving each other for raising um Income to two dollars and five cents. Again, it's a bunch of people spreading lies, not lies, they mix truth with fiction. Okay, truth with fiction that's what they do. They'll double talk and they're gonna block everybody that they don't want to hear from that, that debunks anything they say, and they're gonna go in their little circles and they're going to keep pushing. Uh, false ideology, religion, cult bullshit uh, on to each other. But the math, facts, and data, the reality of the situation is MMT cannot go to these third world countries uh, and improve it, okay, because their model doesn't work. Colin can sit here and technically say, yeah, look, you know, it's $2.05, we're, we're doing a good job, but reality is there's nothing good about living off $2.05. Uh, Logan's... Uh, you know, the real economy is kicking ass when in reality, this green line over here is earnings that are falling and stock prices, which is the S&P 500 in the white, is rising. Okay, that is not, that's not the real economy. <laughs> okay, that's, that's distortion of the real economy. Let me explain something to you. If I were to pump more mercury inside of this thermometer, okay, and I were to push the level higher, is that, am I going to increase temperature? No. It's just going to give you a false reading, okay? This is distortion. This is not going to in increase the temperature, the, the ambient temperature around you. <laughs> that's, that's just stupid. It doesn't work like that. What if I were to change the numbers, okay? It's not going to change the temperature outside. It doesn't work like that. But for some reason, this is the way MMT sees the world, that we can just, you know, increase the, the mercury, change the numbers around, and everything is going to be fine. We can all have free stuff and, you know, free this and free that and free, 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 free. At the same time, when you're seeing that the, thermometer just has more mercury inside and giving you a false reading somebody like logan is going to come out and is going to say hey you know look the real economy is heating up it's doing great <laughs> what right yeah but but look at the measurement it's it's reading 110 we're heating up we're doing fine right so you again this is reality you need to learn how to quantify words you can't be fact resistant you can't be mathematical resistant on october 11th there was supposed to be a deal signed phase one between the united states and china and every single day since we're close to a trade deal we're close to a trade deal we're close close to a trade deal we're close to a trade deal okay every single day the repos keep pumping in hundreds of billions of dollars that keep going okay we're close to a trade deal and the market goes up and up and up and up and up <laughs> and the economic data keeps going down and down and down and down right um you see corporate earnings are not doing a whole hell of a lot and that's even after the stock buybacks that manipulate the price to earnings okay so 
somebody's telling you that, hey, you know, all we need to do is pump more money or more mercury into the thermometer and everything is going to be great. You can have all this free stuff. Uh, they're full of shit. When somebody's telling you the real economy is beating the bears because we're pumping more um, mercury into the thermometer, they're full of shit. When somebody's telling you, hey, you know, it's $2.05 now versus $1.95 1800s were improving, things are going well, they're full of shit. So I recently got a comment from somebody on YouTube that used to follow me from 10 years ago when I used to make fun of Peter Schiff. Now, I am apolitical. I don't know anything about politics. I, I've gotten to know more about politics and, you know, how people just get crazy with it, right? They try to mix politics and economics and, you know, whatever. But I was never political. I've never voted in my life. I, to me, it doesn't matter who's president. They're just puppets anyway, and they're just showmen, right? Master of ceremonies, but beyond that, they're they're useless. But I remember back then, I was every single day. I'm not kidding. You, every single day, I would get hate mail. <laughs> Everybody would, you know, oh, what are you talking about? You know, because back then, uh, I was like, of course, the government should deficit spend, right? because we are having high unemployment we need we need that stimulus we need to assist the economy to start to improve okay and that was in line with mmt right so of course i'm going to be on the mmt side that yes this is not going to be inflationary first of all there's too many people unemployed you're not going to push prices higher because you're pumping all this money in the banking system it's it's not going to have this hyperinflation buy gold buy silver save yourselves and i have the whatever the fuck is called the uh, my crombian gold card whatever the hell he was selling shift back then and uh, you know like oh jeez the the, the the nuttiness that i would hear oh look at the inflation oil is up to 150 peak oil uh, look at inflation, it's out of control, while nobody understood that all that was was just money shifting from stocks into commodities uh, to push up asset prices, right, artificially, because they were just moving money around within the uh, uh, asset classes. So, I sit here now in 2019, and now, oh... You know, uh, back then I was a socialist. Now, oh, he's a neoliberal. Oh, he doesn't want free stuff for people. Oh, he doesn't understand MMT. <laughs> you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just insane. We went from MMT the description to MMT the prescription. And even the description was wrong back then. But it didn't matter. It wasn't. It wasn't about you know how the monetary system works. Who cares how the monetary system works? Can any any of you people go out and start counting how many real dollars exist in the world? Nobody. Nobody can go out and, and count that, right? Um, so when when I hear this this nuttiness, and usually I'm going to end up somewhere where I don't agree with anybody, not the left, not the right, not the MMTers, not the gold bugs. And, and the reason that I end up here is because I don't care about your politics. It doesn't matter to me. I care about the mathematics. And when you do the mathematics correctly, the mathematics are going to tell you what's going on. Okay. It's going to tell you very simply. And the, and no economy starts with who the, the currency issuer, monopoly currency issuer is. Okay? That's, that's faulty logic. That doesn't even make sense. Okay? The center of the economic universe is humans, is people. Okay? And then these people go out and they work and the dollars come afterwards. Okay? Yeah, but the government issues first. No, no. The government issues and engraves coins, digits, dollars, whatever. Okay? So people can have a medium of exchange. 
you can pump all the dollars that you want. Pump them into the economy as much as you want. You're not going to get more than what the productive output of that economy is. You're not going to do it. It doesn't work like that. Okay? And this is why Keynes said, look, I'm, there's a recession. Th some things are going right. Don't sit there and say, well, oh, fuck, we don't have any more dollars. We don't have any more gold. Oh, I wish we could. We could really help the economy improve. But we can't do it. Right? He was like, what are you guys, dumb? Just print it up and, you know, stop the bank runs. Fix things. Like, help the economy along. Right? So, yes, in that sense, in that sense, you can deficit spend. Okay? Definitely. But, in the good times, in the good times, you can do the same thing. Because deficits during a recession only assist the economy to improve. Okay? It doesn't improve it. The improvement comes on its own. Just like every recession, every depression prior to the central bank occurred because the economy improved on its own. Now, we have figured out a way that we can assist this, we can mitigate it, we can deficit spend, but what is deficit spending? Is it the act of printing that creates value? No, of course not. It's not. It's the wealth of the nation that creates value, okay? So it's when, when you're issuing a bond, you are purchasing the assets of that nation. So the government is borrowing based on the national assets. So you give them your $100 or whatever, okay? They take those dollars that are in saving and they recirculate them back into the functional economy that they flow through the profit mechanism, right? You have income, uh, the saving from the household, income to saving from, you know, just cut it in half. This is household, right? And they have income, the savings, and then this flows to the profit, profit, savings. And then this ends up in the savings bubble, okay? And then here's government over here that issues and engraves little pieces of paper and digits and coins and whatever. And then when all those dollars are sitting in the savings bubble and it's not in the functional economy where only 5% of the people, okay, uh, possess these dollars, then the government says, look, I'll issue you a bond, okay, I'll borrow, and then you uh, can give me those savings in dollars and I'll pump it back into the economy and then they'll go through the profit mechanism, back to savings, and then we'll, we'll keep the money flowing. That's, that's the whole point. So as a saver, right, I look at the economy, I look at the nation, do, do they have assets? You know, is it growing? Are they producing nice technology? You know, are they doing whatever they're doing? And if I like it, right, just like a company, if I like it, I buy the bond, okay, and wait for the interest. Um, if I don't like it, it looks like Turkey or Lebanon or Zimbabwe, I don't give my money. I don't, want, I don't want your interest rates in the future because I don't think uh, you have sufficient amount of national wealth that you can repay me with, with an equal amount of value. So guess what? You can't borrow. If you can't borrow, you end up like Venezuela. So you can print all the money that you want, but you're not going to print value for that economy. You can't do it. Printing paper, digits, coins, engraving coins, whatever, is never going to give you value. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Okay, the act of printing does not create value. And right in that little small little sentence, okay, debunks everything about MMT. Everything, it's gone, finished. You can take it, throw it in the trash, it doesn't work because the government cannot pay for things, okay, because the government cannot print value. So if the government is a monopoly, currency issuer means dick okay it doesn't mean anything it's not that i don't want people to have free stuff it's not that i don't want people to have free health care and a job guarantee and all these free things a green new deal it, it, what benefit is it to me for people not to have that <laughs> none there's no there's no benefit to me it's not like oh you know i hate them <laughs> let people suffer <laughs> like that's just stupid, okay? And it's not just me. Nobody wants that, right? If we could 
produce enough where we could, you know, tax enough and pay for those things, I'm with you. Let's do it. You know, let's do it all. I'm, yeah. But if the GDP is not growing, if, if the economy is not growing sufficiently to pay for these things, then what are you doing? What are you doing? You are increasing the mercury in the thermometer. You are pretending that these new digits you're going to put next to the thermometer is increasing heat when the temperature has not changed nothing so what are you going to get what are you going to get eventually the amount of money that has been liquefied from bonds from stocks from whatever uh, is going to just keep pumping into the economy keep going into the savers the top five percent and then once those dollars equal the amount of the national wealth, the economy blows up. The dollar blows up, and then the 5%, they're going to take their money, they're going to go somewhere else, and then the 95% who are left with the liabilities are stuck in this economy that now cannot print, cannot be assisted in any way, and all those promises of free candy, free this, free that, everything is free. Now, guess what? I got to kick you off the job guarantee. I got to kick you off health care. I got to kick you off uh, the Green New Deal. Uh, I got to, you know, do all these other things that uh, that's going to be somebody else's problem, not these people who are promising you the world, right? The other problem, the other problem, socialism versus capitalism. Which one is better? Well, capitalism is, okay? Uh, but can capitalism survive on its own? Of course not, okay? cannot happen. It's not possible. Because eventually, the very few are going to own everything. And then, uh, how about conversely with the uh, socialist way? Well, eventually, you're going to run out of other people's productivity. And you're going to want free this and free that and free this. And you're going to end up exactly what I'm describing. Everybody's going to be on a job guarantee like they were in the Soviet Union. There's no skills. Okay, There's no... Uh, uh, there's no incentive to go out and work, to, to to improve your life. There's none of that stuff. Nobody's educated. Everybody's receiving the same amount of money. And now instead of building Boeing 787s and, you know, satellites and whatever, okay, they're scraping gum off the pavement. They're planting uh, flowers for the public purpose. And they are... Um, you know, whatever, lifeguards, musicians, and um, and that's not economic growth, unfortunately. I, I wish it was, but it's not. Which brings me to the golden MMT cow. Okay, what's the golden MMT cow? Well, the MMT solution to everything, okay, you have two cows, you have 300 people milking those uh, cows, you call it a job, you claim that you're full employment, high productivity, serving the public purpose, and then you print endless amount of trillions of dollars annually, okay? You get votes, you get into a position of political power, and everything is going to be all right. Everything's going to be fine, everything is going to be beautiful, and we're going to cure poverty and get free this and free that. And once they're in power, they're going to control energy. They're going to control uh, jobs. They will control wages. They're going to control housing. They're going to control uh, rents. Okay. How different is that from the Soviet Union? Think about it. How different is it? They're going to control everything. Everything is going to be on the government. And this is why when you listen again to Mosler, you got to listen to him. Oh, uh, it's the hut tax that creates value for a currency, not people's productivity. Nope. All the people are doing is provisioning the government. We're prov everybody's, you know, I wake up in the morning, I'm provisioning the, the government, flying an airplane around. I'm provisioning the government, right? This is, this is what the mentality of the MMT world is, that the government is going to be our nanny state, we're going to go into this uh, Marxist new Soviet uh, world. 
we'll just print money no more poverty right where have you heard that before and we're going to end up like the soviet union eventually collapsing and the few are always going to have the power and uh, you, know, you know how that goes i don't i don't i can excuse the soviets because they didn't know what the hell they were doing right the marxists they, they had no clue so they experimented shit didn't work okay fuck it <laughs> we're done no more but these new guys these new mmt neo-soviet comrades these guys no excuse no excuse they don't know how cuba ended up they don't know how north korea ended up they don't i mean come on give me a break and as the saying says those who wish to live off the the government need to remember that the government lives off of them right so think about that anyway so this is my little rant this is the way i perceive the world and if i'm not agreeing with you it's because the math doesn't agree with you okay and i certainly have no problem changing my mind if you can mathematically show me okay how the act of printing money equals value how um the two dollar and five cents a day versus dollar 95 you know dollar per day drastically improves somebody's life how government intervention in repo markets uh qe deficits at full employ max employment right with rising wages is only producing two percent gdp while we are deficit spending minimum 4.5 percent gdp uh, of deficits right so you gotta you gotta show me the math okay you need to show me how if we removed repos imposed the taxes that we cut uh, qe we undo qe uh, we undo uh, uh we start running you know balanced budgets how then i want you to show me how the real economy mr logan is beating the bears okay um then we can talk then we then we can talk till then shh, don't talk about things you don't understand okay this is not a popularity contest okay this is this is reality now you want to tell your little friends in your little circles you know circle joking and blocking people and doing whatever stay there have fun do whatever it's better than watching the kardashians but if you're going to come at me you better come with math facts and data the real kind okay not the singapore kind okay don't don't come with that stuff don't don't come with two dollars and five cents don't sit there and tell me government debt equals private sector assets and then come out and start complaining how eight men have more money than the 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 bottom half of the of the world okay don't sit here and uh <laughs> and, and and double talk like that okay because that's garbage that's garbage i don't want to hear that stuff you come with math facts and data disprove me i'll be more than happy to change my views and uh and, and improve and that's the way it's done unfortunately okay so that's it guys uh i'm always going to tell you what the math facts and data are and uh that's it sorry about that sorry you're offended take care bye bye